In this video we're going to be installing the pistons into the block. So first things first, put down a nice clean piece of paper towel and lay out all your parts so you know what they are and where they're going. And next we focus on clocking. Okay, and what clocking is is putting these slits in your rings in the right spot. Now, there is some information that was very difficult for me to find. Um, and Bill from Piranha Raceworks was more than willing to help me out with it, uh, but we needed a little, a little bit more clarification for me because I'm difficult. So you have uh, two rings here, okay? One is kind of a shiny silver, and the other one is kind of a shiny black, okay? And you can really only tell the difference between the two of them when you put them side by side. I'm not sure if that's going to... And it doesn't show up. But they both have N200 stamped on them. Okay? And then, the, what the, where I was going with this was uh, the darker one of the two is the bottom ring, and it's got a little slit in it. Okay? And the lighter of the two is uh, the shinier one, and it has no slit. Okay? Now make sure that all of your rings before you start this process are um, have been ground to your specifications. Okay, now you can either go follow Wiseco's specification, uh, which there is a formula in your pink thing to go by, um, or you can use Hyundai's recommendations, and for the purposes of this build, I am going to be honest, and I'm going to follow Wiseco's guidelines. Why? Because I think Hyundai's guidelines are a little too loose. So, following Wiseco. Now, first things first, let's identify our rings. These are compression rings. These are oil keeper rings. This is your oil spring. And Wiseco uses this ring here, which is a finicky bastard to put on, and it is your oil support ring. And what that does is it adds more support to these three rings here uh, to prevent any failures. Now, we've got our piston combo that we've generated in the last video, and right here we have what's called a ring compressor. This is the Wiseco one for the Genesis Coupe and it is the minus the 86 millimeter so its part number is rs or rcs 08600 let's go wiseco thing now this thing is a really handy tool it's uh let's say 45 bucks at the most and you can get them from Perona raceworks the same place you can buy all of these parts and it it saves you so much time oh my gosh does this save you so much time so uh, let's remember that, okay? And the part number is going to be in the bottom when I'm speaking about the part number. All right? So, continuing on. What do we have to do to prep this for putting rings on? Now, there's a lot of debate in the technical world on how to do this process, and because of that debate, I've been very, very hesitant in showing exactly how I do this because I'm used to building diesels, not gasoline engines. So, um, what I'm used to doing and what may be ideal for these, uh, I don't know. Okay? So, let's start with step one. We need a squirt bottle with oil in it. Uh, this is just your regular garden squirt bottle, and I've got my Rotella T6 in here. And anybody who says, don't break in an engine with synthetic, good for you. I don't really care what you think. Now, uh, the first ring that we install is the oil um, support ring. And it is a very, very tight ring. And it has a little dimple in the bottom here. Now, this is really important. Follow along, please. Remember how we talked about the dimple in the front of the piston? to indicate forward. Now there's a special way that Wiseco wants this done. This ring here goes so dimple, oil grooves, this ring goes here. 
Okay? This ring, however, needs its dimple in the middle of one of these oil grooves. I don't like putting anything too complicated, so where the spring connects is where the dimple goes. Make that simple for you guys, okay? Now, at this point, don't worry about getting oil on your piston because once your engine is built, it won't matter. It'll have oil on it anyways, okay? So, dimple down. And we got the dimple there. Now, there's a little bit of a mishmash trick to this. Don't put the spring too far up on the body. And before somebody says, why are you not using a um, ring expander, which we will talk about in a second, and my answer is going to be because until you've had one of these fly off and hit you in the face, because you stuck it on a ring expander, shut up. Okay, so we've got it on for the most part. Just do the simple process. Sliding it up into place. And it's on. Now, this won't be able to be seen on the camera, but this is where this, the, the halves meet, okay? And there's a dimple right around here. Now, that dimple needs to be in there. Think of it as a lock, okay? That keeps this retainer from spinning. So until you have that dimple in that hole, okay, like I just got there, until you have that dimple in the hole, just use your fingernail and move this around, okay? Now, next thing. We're going to put this oil spring on, okay? Now there's the only one way to do this correctly. The oil spring does not clip into itself, okay? It butts up against each other, okay? And the two, uh, I guess you could say, dishes at the end both face down, so the dish goes down. So what we end up with, I'm just going to check the camera to make sure I'm showing this right. What we end up with is that, and that goes towards the top, okay? And for this, there's no real special way to do it. Just move it around and down and plop it on. Now before you get too carried away, you'll see there's a little pink indicator. Okay, a little pink indicator, and there's our double dip, okay? That pink indicator just helps you find what you're looking for. Now, we rotate that pink indicator around until the double dip is over that middle one there, okay? Now, looking at the top of the piston, you see? Dimple, middle dip. Now comes the fun part, which are these little bastards. These are by far the most annoying pieces to install. Now, I also do not use a ring expander for these, but let me come around here. What I do is I Put the top, the bottom down. Oh, we should talk about clocking first, actually. Okay, so here's the front of the cylinder. Here's where that double butt is. Here's your exhaust valve ports. Okay, that's where your valves sit down. 
the choose a ring, basically, one sits there, okay, and the other, that little split, sits there, okay? So this one, we're going to do the bottom. I'll just rotate it around because I find it easier to do it this way. Ooh, that was close. Now, so far, every one of these has been a bastard to me. I always start with the bottom, no particular reason why, but I just do. And this is where it becomes a little prick. You see that, that double, the double bunt has fucked up on me. And that's normal, that happens. So just get that, if you, you do the bottom first, just get that in the bottom between the double and that first ring we put on. Then we release the double and it slides in. See? Easy. Next, we flip it over again. We double check that that mark is right where it needs to be. And we install this one. I got enough oil on my glove still. Just move that out of the way for now. Just praying that the camera is in focus right now. Because that has been a real big gripe for me. It's the camera not getting into focus and you guys missing stuff. Alright, so once it's done you should have a little oil gasket sandwich thing going on, okay? And that's your oil seal. Now the next thing is we need to put in our compression rings, okay? Our compression rings, we always do the bottom one first. There's the oil. You guys can hear the coyotes, I think. Now, Oops. Numbers are right here. Groove is towards the bottom. And then we get this handy contraption. And what this contraption is is called a ring expander. And what it does is make sure that we don't twist the ring as we're putting it on. Because twisting the ring and putting tension on it can cause micro fractures, which cause the ring to fail quicker. So if you have one of this style, okay, looks a little awkward and it kind of is. Okay. Put it in. Now, before you think of anything, it's going to compress the ring a little bit, and you're going to go, what is going on? But it's okay. Just line it up, keep it in its keepers, and then expand it. Okay? All right. Now, with it expanded, you're going to feel a little nervous about this, and I don't blame you. Not only are these things expensive, but they're... Fragile is all hell, okay? So you got your ring, you're expanding it, and we got that dimple. We're putting number two on first, okay? So that's the lower one. And the gap goes to the dimple on the number two, okay? Now these compression rings are a lot thicker than uh, your oil keepers, okay? And because of that extra thickness, they're not so jumpy. Okay, but you're going to see that it's a little loose, okay? So if you stick it in on the wrong spot or whatever, it's really loose so you can just move it around, okay? Now we're going to stick in number, the number one. Move it up. Now, some people might think, oh, you're using too much lube, blah, 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 blah. Well, the thing is, is the block is going to sit for a little bit longer than what a typical engine build would, okay? Now because of that, because of that, I am making sure that there's plenty of lube because I don't want anything rusting and I definitely don't want excess lube um, in there, obviously, because you get carbonization. But it's going to drain past the, the rings a little bit, and I want to keep the top of the, the cylinder liners from rusting, which is 
very easy to do on a steel liner block. Okay. Now we're going to do number one. Okay, that's the top compression ring. And you guys will kind of see that if you take this gap here and you slide it in like that, you're now locked in that groove. And you can just gently release it. And it should be spot on. Okay. Real simple, real easy. All right. So we double check before getting any further. We double check all of our rings are in the right spot. Okay, because we don't want to have to tear the whole thing apart just because a simple five second oversight. Okay. Next, now I always do this. I lubricate my ring compressor. Now, if you are using a typical uh, bolt style um, ring compressor, one, sorry, two, um, they do their job, they're just not as easy as this. And you will see why they're not as easy as this. Um, now, we are going to put the rings piston inside the ring compressor. Everything's clocked. How it goes in the ring compressor is not too particular. Okay. However, I like to drop it in. And you might notice that it gets hung up on the compression rings. Just give it a little bit of hand love. I'm sure some of you are really skilled at that. And it goes in. And all those rings are now slowly going to be compressed. Now this, what makes this so special, okay, is this is a taper bore, okay, so um, a banjo style, or the bolt style, okay, is a round circle, and you tighten everything up, and then you have to knock it into place. Well, what Wiseco does, and I'm sure other companies do, okay, just FYI, I'm sure other companies do, but I've got Wiseco, so we're repping Wiseco. What Wiseco does is it puts a taper on it, okay? So the top isn't 86 millimeters, but the bottom is. So as the piston slides in, the rings are gently compressed down to the 86 millimeter that we're looking for. All right. Now, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to prep the liner. Okay. And uh, we're going to leave this alone for right now. Actually, no, we're not. No, we're not, because I might as well cover this instead of having to backtrack the camera twice. Okay. Um, oh, crud. i got to do this all over again. Oh, well. The Wiseco thing makes it so easy. It's not a big deal. All right. Now, you remember in the... Uh, we talked about the rods before, and they have numbers down the side. Okay? Numbers down the side is important because of the next step. We are going to take... Oh, we're going to take the bolt out of the side without the numbers, okay, and we're going to lay it down. Then we're going to take the bolt with the numbers on the side up, but we're not going to take it out. And you'll see in a second what I'm going to do. Now, why did I do that? Simplest reason why I did that is to make sure that this bolt goes right back in the hole that it started in. And that's because the, the threads are already used to that bolt, and that's what we want to stick with, okay? Now, before we carry on, we have a bearing that needs some blueberry jam. Now, if you are using a clevite or something, assembly lube that is red and liquidy and gross and gooey, okay? Um... The next step is going to be a little bit different for you because you can't really, well, I guess you could. Um, you can lube this up, but you don't want the lube getting into the cylinder, okay? You don't want it touching the liner. You only want it touching the crankshaft. So, um, when we start working on the block, we will, I will kind of cover that, but I, that be a, because I use bearing grease, um, not bearing lube, it's a little bit different for me, okay? But I will talk about it anyways for those who are curious.
Now in the last video, you did not see me put the bearings in, if I remember correctly. If you did, then ignore what I'm about to say. Bearings go in, same way they came out on the original rods. Same way. Just give them a light wipe. Don't use any chemicals on them, don't use any solvents on them, nothing. Okay? A light wipe to get any packing dust off of them. Okay? Next, you lube the, you do not, sorry, you do not lube the back side of the bearing. Okay? Don't lube it. Why? Because we need friction to hold it in. And lube is an anti-friction device. So, uh, unless it's friction modified lube. But either way, um, that's, don't lube the backside. Make sure it's nice and dry, but do not put chemicals on it. We do not want the bearings eroding. Okay? Um, but we put lube on the inside. Okay? So, let's turn the camera around and uh, we'll talk about prepping the block. All right, so we just finished up with the piston. Now we're going to start prepping the block. Okay, now you're going to notice I've got one, four, three already in there. We're going to do two. Okay? And there is no particular order you have to put these in. Consider them self-contained entities. Okay? Now, I like to take my lube, my oil, Lube the living hell out of my cylinder. And all the way down to the bottom. And I just be careful around the top. Okay. And then I take a shop cloth. Okay. At this point, your stuff should already be honed, bored, or whatever you're doing. Okay. This is just to remove any dust I've gotten in there. Any grime. Alright. And then we repeat the process. Now, if at this point you have not, you have put your studs in, try and avoid getting oil or lubricants or greases or anything on the threads, okay? And clean up the top of your cylinder, okay? And don't use any spray chemicals or anything on this little piece here, but we want to make sure that it's free of oil, okay? Straightening this out, and three is up, so I know two is up. One and four go down, two and three come up, or vice versa, okay? Now we're doing this with dot facing this way, okay? This is the front of the block. One, two, three, four, two, dot, okay? All right, now, this is what makes this style of um, ring compressor so special, okay? We don't hit the piston. We don't want to hit the piston, okay? It's already locked. The other three went in so well. It just has to be the one it has to be the one I film that gets jammed. Oh, well, this is kind of a bummer. It does give me the opportunity to show you guys what happens if this does happen, okay? Typically, when you're using this, and this might just be because of my rings, typically, you give it a wiggle, okay? 
and you push it down. And you saw how fast the top section went down, okay? For whatever reason, sometimes it binds, okay? Make a little paper towel cup, okay? Take your trusty piece of light wood, okay? Don't use a hard wood. And it's down. Baron shifted. So, keep your eyes on your bearings. Alright, now the next step is remember we had this bolt in there, number. This goes back to the number thing, okay? We know that because this dot lines up with the K1 symbol on the conrod, we know that. The numbers are on the left side of the K1 symbol on the on the gone rod. Now, why this is important is because there's not a whole lot of light in there and it's very difficult to see. To do this part, you need your 11 mil socket. And you just gently bolt it up. It, don't do it all the way up. You gotta do it equal increments. But we're not torquing, okay? Let's go back to that magic word. We are not torquing. Say it with me now. We are not torquing. To get it nice and snug, use a ratchet. Do not use the ratcheting feature of the ratchet. We're only using it for a little bit of leverage. We're only going to snug. Before you snug it up, you want to reach up and you want to feel the side of the, the, the conrod where the bearing cap meets the conrod. And you want to feel and make sure that uh, the um, there's no gap, okay? Because you don't want to tighten it up on crooked, okay? Now we ended up with a little bit of oil. Notice I'm inspecting the paper towel on a regular basis. Don't push too deep. You don't want anything in this groove falling down between there. Okay? And at this point, you can take your gloves off. If you've got all four in, you can take your gloves off. And uh, we can give the crank a little bit of a spin. Not too, too much, though. Okay. And then I want to do number one to top dead center. The reason I'm doing number one to top dead center, uh, actually, if you wanted to, you could drop them so they're about 50-50, just to start with. Okay, and that way when you put your head on and you start bolting your cams up, okay, your valves aren't in a strike zone, okay? So, there we go. That's putting a uh, piston combo into a block. So, hope you guys enjoyed the videos. Um, check out our sponsors, please. And uh, make sure you guys subscribe, wherever the subscribe is nowadays. And make sure that you guys check out Project Woodstock on GenCoop.com because I'm going to have a lot more pictures and stuff like that going up here in the next little while. So you guys can definitely check it out. And to those who have noticed by this point in the video, I got blue pajamas now. The wife thought we're at 300 subscribers, over 300 subscribers now. So she said, Derek, it's time that you get new pajamas. So that's what I did. I got new pajamas just for this video. So you guys will see seeing a lot more videos uh, of the rest of putting the block together and a lot more of my pajamas in the future. So, see you guys next time.